Good morning, lovely little peepsicles. Oh, I guess it's probably morning for most of you. Some of you. Ugh, time zones. Anyway, I've had some things happen. They're not too good. And I feel a little let down by the local law enforcement. So we're going to try to move to somewhere safer with more people around. You know, somewhere where at least if something happens, there's a quicker out. I like knowing my exits and knowing that there are like no exits out here. Is um, It doesn't make me feel any better after what happened. So, that's what happened. Yay. Maybe I'll talk about it another time. We'll see after, um, hopefully there is something, even a start, to taking care of what happened. Until then, I'm probably not going to really talk about it. You know, just in case. So today we're going to talk about my home city, the lovely, the haunted, where, hey, you know so-and-so died there, like, on that street corner, and it's like every street corner that someone has died, and like every building someone has died, and like every hotel, at least like ten people have died, at least half of those are mysterious, at least Maybe three of the other five left are like, murder suicides. You know, the usual. Everyone has died somewhere in a horrible way in this city, and everything is haunted. It's the wonderful, the one, the only Los Angeles. Gotta love Los Angeles. <coughs> Sorry, um, my throat is still a little bit iffy. So we are going to read about the Haunted Picnic Table, number 29 at Griffith Park. I've been to Griffith Park. My dad did not take us to the Haunted Picnic Table. It was a missed opportunity, but that was my dad. As soon as a moment of nope occurred that wasn't in the house, he would just, you know, kindly remove us, quietly remove us from this situation. As he would say today in the internet, he would nope the F out of there. You know, you just gotta nope. Nope, nope, nope. And that includes Griffith Park. I mean, Griffith Park is really pretty, there's a lot you can do there, it's not like Echo Park, it, that's the park you go to die at, you know. Echo Park is really beautiful, but we all know Echo Park. It's like one of those, like, local secrets, city secrets, public secrets, public secrets. But if you go to Echo Park, chances are you're probably gonna end up kidnapped and murdered there, or you're gonna end up murdered somewhere else and dumped there, or you're gonna go missing there, and they will never, ever find you again. Echo Park, a beautiful place to die. That'd be a great postcard, actually. <laughs> it's pretty, though. I've been there with my dad. There's, um, water things. You can see there, it's really pretty. Also, the tar pits. Love the tar pits. Also, went there with my dad. Why? Because we want to see old, gigantic, exploding dinosaurs bubble up from the um, earth. It's a good movie, too. Volcano. Check it out. Anyway, the haunted picnic table number 29 at Griffith Park. You'll get a much better recording of this later. Um, because I'm 
packing things and trying to take care of things. I cannot remember for the life of me where I put my snowball. So we're going to do what I was originally doing with this channel anyway. Give you my takes on things as we talk about spooky things. You know me. I'm a hoe for that spooky shit. Oh, I should probably cut that. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> okay, so stretched over 4,210 acres, Griffith Park is one of the largest urban parks in North America. It's a paranormal enthusiast's favorite exploring spot as it reportedly has a terrible curse. Don't they all? They all have terrible curses. Well, maybe not Yosemite, but people just disappear. They just swore one one the way out there. A number of ghosts. Who doesn't? And a creature which witnesses described as a long humanoid that takes huge strides, has a bent back and a long neck, and flaunts black eyes and transparent green skin. So you mean just practically anyone in Los Angeles who is power walking? I'm sorry. No. I'm not. <laughs> However, as reported in this article, none of these is as creepy as the happenings which take place at picnic table. Number 29. The ghosts at Griffith Park's picnic table. Number 29. 22-year-old musician Ran Garrett and 20-year-old aspiring actress Nancy Jensen, Jensen, Johnson, Johnson, Jensen, which one did I say first, were childhood sweethearts. While making love at the picnic table of number 29 at Griffith Park because no love making in Los Angeles is complete. <laughs> But that complete exhibitionism. They were inconceivably crushed by a nearby tree that fell on them. Hmm. Yep. That is definitely gonna ruin your night. It's gonna ruin your whole week. Their cremated remains were scattered on the table and its surroundings, laying to rest the lovers who died in each other's arms. I mean, if you're gonna die, I mean, isn't that a better way to die? I'm just saying, it's probably a better way to die. To further immortalize the lovers, someone scribbled, R.I.P. 10-31-1976, Rand and Nancy, on top of the picnic table. The green inscription on the table you see in the picture. So... Not only did they die horribly in each other's arms, making love publicly on a picnic table, they also died on Halloween. It does not get more Los Angeles than that. You hear a lot of people complaining, a lot of movie critics, you know, like what's from Chicago and blah blah blah, they don't live here. They're always complaining that Hollywood movies come up with the stupidest most contrived coincidences when those kinds of things happen in this city all the time all the time it is like our thing if it's not a creepy coincidence it's not los angeles it's not hollywood it does not belong here <laughs> sorry it's just Sometimes I hear, like, I love these critics, I watch them myself on YouTube. But sometimes it's like, dude, you don't even know. Like, sometimes I think some movies were just made for people who grew up watching movies being made. Like, I live in a little suburb where tons of movies were made all the time. You get to see tons of people, like the Spider-Man movies. You got to see Tobey Maguire, or a guy who looks a lot like Elijah Wood, but also a lot like this guy who went to my high school who looked exactly like both of them, but neither of them. 
but exactly like them at the exact same time. They were like really creepy triplets. And all about the same height, I think. And, um, yeah. Like, when you see movies being made in front of you, like, it's just like this thing. Like, this is why I can't understand this whole spoiler thing. I grew up on practical, physical, it's right there in front of me, spoilers. Or you would call them spoilers now. Before we used to call them exclusive sneak peeks. Like when they blew up the aquarium. Um, aquarium of the Pacific. They were filming, blew up a fake aquarium in front of the aquarium, water all over the place. Beautiful. Beautiful. Alicia Silverstone met her in the- my sister met her in the bathroom. I got to see her. I kinda met her, but didn't exactly meet her, cause I got to wave at her. I don't know if she was waving it to me. It was a crowd. Or if that was like her, or someone who looked just like her. I really hope it was her. But my sister definitely saw her in the bathroom. And met her. You know, this is stuff you just grew up with. It's just part of life. Like, I knew the White House was gonna be blown up in Independence Day way before the movie came out. And you know them building the little White House? It was exciting. Them blowing it up was like the highlight of the day my dad came home and said, Hey, guess what they did? What is it, Dad? They blew up the lighthouse. Not the lighthouse. The White House! They blew up the White House today. Yay! That was me going, Yay! Yay, it's all blown up. Woo. Where am I on this thing? Oh yeah, the coincidences. You know, it's just, this is par for the course for us in Los Angeles. It's just one of those things, like you'll probably find like tons of weird freaking murders that happen exactly on Halloween and some of them will even have Halloween themes. It'd be like something straight out of a horror movie and probably will be made into a horror movie. You might even join the Conjuring series if you play your cards right. Despite the fact that their ashes have long since blown away, many eerie events tend to take place there, especially around their death anniversary. Halloween. Halloween hauntings. Halloween deaths. That is life in Los Angeles. Please be kind when you critique our things. This is just life here. Come join us. It's fun. This could indicate that the spirits of Rand and Nancy aren't too far away from the picnic table they had died at. Further adding to the mystery is the fact that the fallen tree hasn't rotted over the past 40 years. The unhappy lovers on things. Many people who worked at Griffith Park have encountered Nancy and Rand or suffered at their hands. <clears throat> That's even good alliteration. Alliteration, Halloween death, Halloween haunting, making love on a picnic table where a giant tree just happens to fall on you on Halloween. That's a movie right there. One of the first incidents was reported by city tree trimmer Morris Carl, who was authorized to clear the fallen tree. According to the incident report he filed that evening, Carl arrived at the site on November 7th at 11.40 a.m. He was entrusted with sawing the branches and the trunk of the tree. However, after starting a routine procedure, he was overcome by a strange sensation. In my statement, I said that I felt funny. What happened was I would sawed off the crown of the tree, when from out of nowhere I got hit with these real strong chills. So hard it was as if I was coming down with the fastest flu ever. I tried to shake it off and get back to work, but each time I'd fired up the saw and get near the tree I'd get real cold and hear this weird moaning and crying. So I'd stop the saw and listen, and it would go away. 
the bite started up again and it would come back. Finally, I was freezing so bad I had to go to the truck and get my coat. That's when the tree started shaking violently. The tree just went crazy, not just lightly shaking, but bouncing up and down as if someone was picking it up and dropping it. The tree kept shaking, the heavy power saw off the table continuously, and only stopped moving when it succeeded. However, things didn't end there. The moaning started again, and Kark, I think they mean Carl, heard an insistent whisper in his ear, Leave us alone. Carl tried escaping, but his engine wouldn't start. That's when the threat got real. Next thing is this rubbing sound. <coughs> Next thing is this rubbing sound along the windshield and letters are being written across the fogged up glass. There's an N and an E and the first word is next. Then there's a T and an I and then it ends up being time. Then a Y and an O and a U and the last word was die. Next time you die. Um, definitely has a flair for the dramatic Los Angeles ghost. One is an actress, aspiring actress. While they did let Carl off the hook, Nancy and Rand weren't as kind to a supervisor, Dennis Higgins, agreeing to a $500 bet to cut the tree after dark. Higgs was found next morning flat on his back and not moving. His chainsaw was by his side and amazingly, its blade was bent in a U-shape. Now the coroner had listed the cause of death as a heart attack, but those who saw Higgs's corpse remarked that his hair had gone completely white and he wore a horrified, frozen expression. The police further revealed that Higgs's hands were injured and his fingernails were broken. Investigating further, they deduced that he had struggled against someone who dragged him along the ground for 15 feet towards the picnic table. Many park workers have been told to leave the ghosts of the picnic table number 29 over the years, which is why the tree hasn't been removed till this day. And don't try doing it yourself if you're heading to Griffith Park. Many who did so before you were grabbed around the chest, given the same warning, you die next, and barely escaped with their lives among horrible sobbing sounds, screams, and a wicked laughter. Honestly, at this point, just leave them alone. They're just probably shagging in the afterlife doing their thing, being ghosties together. At least they're together. I think I read somewhere that they were like childhood sweethearts. It makes it really sad that they died like that. But still, great Hollywood haunting. It is amazing as can get that so many coincidences lined up and that this particular haunting is always more active on the day they died, coincidentally Halloween, the spookiest time of the year. And that is the first little article we will be reading like this. And eventually a better video will come out where I won't be such a schmuck and play around a bit. But um, you know, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. It'll be better. It'll be all polished and nice. And you'll enjoy it, I hope. Whoever's watching these, after the algorithm made it seem like no one is watching them, thank you for subscribing or just finding it randomly. Thank you. You are wonderful, beautiful people. Thank you for being so amazing. And you are awesome. Bye-bye.